Okay, so let me share my screen here. Cool. Okay. I don't know anything about Labyrinth besides like the movie. So this is very exciting. Awesome. <laughs> oh man. It's cool because just like a lot of things, it can be, you know, very simple. And then also when you really dive into it, it can get complex, but That's for sure. it all comes back to like simple things. So yeah, I'm excited. Cool. So, oh, let's see here. There we go. The labyrinth. So what is a labyrinth? Uh, labyrinths are defined as having a single pathway that meanders toward a center. Unlike a maze, there are no dead ends. And instead of walls, the path of the labyrinth is laid out flat on the ground with the design and destination and full view from the entrance. So here you can see different labyrinths, um, ancient carvings of labyrinths actually. Um, here's one in Cornwall from 1800 to 1400 BC. Um, here's one uh, carved by the Comuni people in Lombardy, Italy, dated back to 3000 BC. And here's one in Sardinia, dating back to 2500 to 2000 BC. And then what's kind of amazing is uh, Gobekli Tepe, the ancient site is actually a labyrinth as well. And this is the oldest dated ancient site that we know of, which dates back to 10,500 BC. So labyrinths are definitely just a part of our consciousness, I would say. Mm -hmm. Um, so the best known example of a labyrinth is embedded in the stone pavement of the Chartres Cathedral in Paris. Uh, the Middle Ages was a time of pilgr pilgrimages, and since most people couldn't make it to the grand, make the grand pilgrimage to Jerusalem, considered by Christians to be the center of the world and symbolizing the kingdom of heaven, they would make pilgrimages to important cathedrals such as Canterbury, Santiago de Compostela, and Chartres. And once there, they would end their pilgrimage by walking the labyrinth to the center and then slowly retracing their steps to regain the outside world and return to their homes. The Chartres was, um, the Chartres labyrinth sometimes was walked in place of the actual pilgrimage to Jerusalem and considered a holy experience. People believe that if you walk the labyrinth with the full dedication of a pilgrim, you would be transformed. The old you will be grounded at the threshold stone and a purified you emerges ready to tackle new directions in your life's journey. I think this one's so cool looking. Love that design. Then there's a labyrinth uh, in Glastonbury at the Tor. Tor is the word for hill. Um, and so here we see the labyrinth meandering up the hill to the tower that aligns with the sunrise at Beltane and the sunset at Samhain. And this site is on a geomantic corridor that was found by John Michel, really interesting character if you want to get into geomancy. <laughs> and this uh, geomantic corridor is called the Michael Line. And it runs through England from St. Michael's Mount in Cornwall, where I showed you that first carving, um, where we you find many other labyrinth carvings. And it runs up through a number of Michael churches, including uh, Brent Tor and Dartmoor, Borough Bridge, Mump, Glastonbury Tor, Avebury Stone Ring, and other sacred spots to the Northeast. So you can see the labyrinth is definitely something that people saw as a sacred symbol. Um, here we see the man in the maze. This is a basket. Um, the man in the maze or Etoy is a sacred symbol of the Tohono Odom people of the Sonoran Desert. Etoy is the creator who emerged from the swirling edges of the earth that brush against the sky. Etoy fought with the yellow buzzard and coyote for supremacy of the earth. After an epic struggle, the Etoy won. He retired to a winding, twisting cave at the top of the Baba Kabir, 
Kivari peak and now only emerges at, emerges at times when his help is needed. Itoi's cave is sacred. Many Tohono Odom walk up Babo Kivari peak once a year to leave a small gift for Itoi at the mouth of his cave. I just think this one is so freaking cool looking too. And you really kind of see it as a sun, which is interesting. I know it definitely looks like a sun to me as well. <laughs> Love it. Mm. And then we have a labyrinth of Nosos and the Minotaur. And this is like the most well-known myth involving a labyrinth. Okay. And so I've definitely heard about this one too then. Yeah. In my like Greek mythology classes in school. Awesome. Yeah. So I think it's interesting how it was called the labyrinth of Nosos, which sounds so similar to the Greek word gnosis, which means knowledge. Um, and the etymology of the word labyrinth or labyrinthos, meaning house of the double headed axe. Um, in Greek mythology, Minos put his wife's minotaur son inside a labyrinth. Anyone who entered the labyrinth was doomed to be eaten by the minotaur. After Minos conquered Athens, every year, seven maidens and seven youths were sacrificed to the Minotaur. Theseus offered to be one of the youths sacrificed, and Minos' daughter, Ariadne, fell in love with him. She helped him by giving him a ball of thread to unroll and follow to find his way back out. He found the Minotaur, slayed it with his sword, and found his way back out. He took Ariadne away, but did not marry her and abandoned her on an island. And so the story continues. The story goes on and on and on. It's almost like the story is a series of labyrinths. So um, what we see in this story, and also kind of with the story of the man in the maze, is how the hero must slay his lower nature or his shadow, represented by, you know, the creature at the center. And... Um, and then he returns with what he's learned. <clears throat> he couldn't have done it in this legend without the divine feminine helping him remember how to get back with that ball of thread. It's like that common thread through the universe, that um, sacred knowledge. And so uh, we also see 14 people sacrificed representing the 14 phases of the moon, which help us remember the original light of the sun, if you remember from our last presentation and seven of each sex. Many labyrinths are seven circuits, representing the seven inner planets in our journey through life and each of their lessons. We can also see the Minotaur as a past version of humanity, each version sacrificing something to evolve into the next version. In this case, the animal nature is being sacrificed to come into full physical human form and new consciousness. And here we arrive at the Taurus field again, uh, this alchemical drawing is very labyrinth-like and represents the constant change, which is the journey to the center again and again and again, like that reciprocal constant of nature, the breath, night and day. It's the same kind of symbolism. Um, so what do the labyrinth symbolize? A lot of things, uh, life, death, and rebirth our descent from source into matter and our way back to source, the hero's journey, overcoming fear, our shadow, evil, our lower nature, finding the answer or solution to a question or a problem, life's twists and turns and our choices and decisions, setting an intention or a prayer and the eternal cycle of life and evolution and also life's initiations. Just to name a few, I'm sure you, the list could go on and on and on. Over here, I, I um, added this picture. There were a lot of Greek coins that had the Gnosis Labyrinth on them, which I just think is so cool. And um, I'm not sure where this labyrinth is. I just, I found this picture and thought this one looked amazing. But, um, okay, and so... The labyrinth is also like our way to divine consciousness. Um, I realized when I was reading jo uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza's book, Becoming Supernatural, that the way the cerebral spinal fluid moves up the spine and into the brain and meanders its way through the ventricles of the brain where it reaches and activates the pineal gland is just like the path of a labyrinth. So 
When we activate our autonomic nervous system, we have access to the unified field and divine consciousness. So it's like when you, when you activate that pineal gland and you get into that super like regulated nervous system, this is when we can activate those spaces. Um, the more these neural pathways get used, the easier it is to access other dimensions or the other world. This helps us to decondition our old patterns and connect to our truest self. Many chemicals are activated in the body through activating this kundalini energy, which Dr. Dispenza goes over in depth in his book, Becoming Supernatural. So, um, when cut down the middle, the cross section of the limbic brain resembles the Egyptian eye of Horus, and the other side would be Thoth. Horus representing the son of God, which we all are, and Thoth representing the messenger between the material world and the other world. So we have the left and the right brain. And remember the Greek terms, labyrinthos, house of the double-headed axe, um, of gnosis, knowledge. This is representing the left and the right side of the brain. You can see in the illustration of the caduceus how much, uh, how the kundalini serpents represent the spinal fluid, the spiral up the staff, our spine, to activate the wings, our access to other dimensions, the pine cone, our pineal gland, and illuminate the crown, which is our highest potential. The caduceus is a symbol for health, and it's also the staff of Hermes, also known as Mercury and Thoth, the messengers between worlds. And um, it's pretty interesting. There was an experiment done using cymatics in this old chapel, and um, there was a labyrinth observed during this experiment. So um, it was one of the last remaining chapels after King Henry VIII destroyed most of the Catholic churches. And it's dedicated to St. Catherine, who was supposedly a fourth century saint who lived in Alexandria. She was a learned woman of the mysteries with connections to the Coptic saint, to Isis, and to later heretics, the Cathars. She was martyred on a wheel and her name in Greek means pure. Cymatics are shapes created by sound. Uh, here we see the shape of this building and the sound being played, creating this labyrinth-like state to help access divine consciousness. So what they did is they, this cathedral had these really high ceilings. And so it had like a special resonance when you played sound in it. And they had people come in and sing. And then this image came up when a man played a flute. Um, and so it's interesting because we see certain shapes show up in cymatics that um, sort of correlate, correlate with the state that our body is in. Because if you think about it, all of our cells and our matter gets organized by sound as well. So I thought this was kind of cool because it I feel like a lot of chapels um, have these special designs um, and even the pyramids, like the King's chamber vibrates at a very special frequency that puts you into altered states. And so I just thought this was kind of cool that they found, um, the labyrinth represented here in this chapel. And I kind of wonder, you know, could that represent going into that labyrinth sort of state of consciousness, which you would hope to wherever you're going to like connect with something higher, right? Um, and then walking the labyrinth. So we're going to draw labyrinths today. Um, you can simply trace the labyrinth with your finger or make a larger version to walk. Um, some suggestions of how to utilize a labyrinth are to ask a question and focus on the question as you walk through. And when you get to the center, see what answer comes through. Hold that answer with you as you exit the labyrinth or you can set an intention and hold that intention as you walk through, leave your intention in the center and walk peacefully out of the labyrinth or continue to focus on the intention. Or you can even just simply be present and enjoy your walk. So um, some people have even like painted a labyrinth on like canvas that they can roll up so they can like roll it out on their floor if they wanna walk it. You could draw one in chalk on a sidewalk. Um, you could go the 
full on and like build one with stones or trace one in the sand at the beach or even just draw it on paper and you know walk through it with a different color marker or with just with your finger but um here we go i'm going to show you how to draw them and that's where you got me i was like all right <laughs> 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 So yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm very curious. But when you said chalk, I was like, I've got a big, a uh, lot of cement in the front of my house. I could just go everywhere. My neighbor might be a little confused, but whatever. <laughs> I'd have to do it in the middle of the street where I live because I don't have a driveway. Can you imagine like somebody coming down in a car and you're just drawing a big labyrinth. <laughs> I'm not walking the labyrinth when somebody drove up. That yeah, and they're just like, oh, it's fine. I'll just get out of the way. My husband and I actually want to build one here um where like we have a perfect little like piece of our land that's like a keyhole shape and it'd be perfect to put a labyrinth yeah in. when you said with stone I was like what if I did it in my backyard yeah but I, but I rent right now so I don't think that would be I mean you could always do like movable ones or yeah I could do like building blocks or something I don't know yeah, yeah. I mean, there, I was seeing this one guy gave a lecture on labyrinths and he is like a master labyrinth builder now. And he will like even go places where they're raising money and, um, or say they're like, there was a, a drive where they were like donating shoes and he used the shoes donated to make the labyrinth. Like he just lined them all up. And then people, and then they took the shoes and donated them after the event. So, or even like a canned food drive, they like made them with the canned food. It was, it was pretty cool to see like how you could pretty much do it with anything. Yeah. Because I had the thought, I was like, what if I got those giant Legos that kids play with? <laughs> I don't know. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, let me show you how to draw one and then you can go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. You start with what they call the seed pattern. And this pretty much always starts with a cross. Okay. And then we're gonna put a dot at each, like what would be like an imaginary corner of a square. Right, okay. And then you start in the center and you draw up and over to the first dot. So you okay. go- Okay, do, do I go through? Okay, no, sorry, I got it, I got it, I see it. <laughs> and then you go to the left to this to this dot oh sorry it's a little small isn't it no, i can see it i got it i can see it and then you draw over to the next end of this line Aye. and then you come over to the next point on the left which is this part of the cross yeah and you go to the right again so it's left to right every time Left to right every time. Okay. And, this, and then, okay. So then in the next one. Is that little point at the bottom. Up and over. And then you hit the bottom of the cross. And that's your labyrinth. Ooh. So this is like one of the simplest kinds you can draw. And then I'm going to take a, a different color. So okay, we. I was going to say mine's not as pretty as yours, but we'll get there. <laughs> yeah, it takes a little practice. <laughs> <laughs> um. And then you can trace through. I... This just makes it easier to see, you know, when you have a different color. And trace all the way around to the center. This is where you pause and you take your moment and then you trace your way the same way back out. Uh -huh. Oh. Did yours work out or did you trace it yet? Well, like, yeah, but I also drew it like kind of small and I have like my blue and black pen and, but I'm like, I should have got like my gel pens from downstairs because I have like all those different <laughs> colors. But I feel like now that I, now that I know what we're doing, I could definitely make a better one. You can do, you can go nuts now. Now let's go, let's step it up one. Let, let's add and let's add a couple more circuits. Okay. So start with the cross. So yeah, we're going to start with a cross again, but we're going to do something a little bit different this time. We're going to put 
like a little L in each okay. quadrant. And then we're gonna put the dots on the outside corners again. I wonder if I don't know, it's better with the light. Yeah, I can see it better with the light. All right, so then we start in the center and trace over to that first line to the right. Yes, 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 yes. And then we go from the left to the right again. Left to the right. And then from the left dot over to the oh, cross. Okay. And then the next left line over. And then the next one. And the next. This one's getting big. Yeah, yeah, mine's good. Oh my God. And it's cool because when you get used to drawing these and you just sit and draw them, that in itself is sort of a meditative practice. Yeah, I'm totally feeling that right. I'm feeling that right now. So I'm gonna trace trace the steps in mine. Okay. Now that I know what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> you make it a little bigger this time. Yeah, well, I got it too close to the top of my page because I just had my notebook. But yeah, yours looks, yeah, yours is getting big. I know, I almost ran out of space too. <laughs> oh, well. Okay, so it's Nice. I'm going to add a little effect here. <laughs> So like the brain uh, yeah, that's exactly what it looks like it's just the brain <laughs> nice <laughs> mine's still a little uh, scrabbly but we're getting there nice it's getting there you know like i said i want to play with my gel pens yeah and you know another thing you can do like i just drew these kind of the simplest way you can but you can also if you want, you can do like, um, you can make it more square, like those Greek ones. Yeah. Where you just change your angles when you come around, you know, and make them more square instead of round. Yeah, I feel like I might be able to do that one a little better. Yeah, so there's just, there's lots of ways that you can play with them. And there's like even um, tons of videos on YouTube and stuff if you want to draw the more complicated ones, like the Chart uh, Cathedral Labyrinth. I was doing, I, I drew, drew that one today and I don't have it memorized yet, but mm -hmm. when I followed directions, it was pretty easy and it looked really cool when I was done. But yeah, just kind of a neat little meditative practice. And what else I think is cool about it is that there were people drawing this. Like there was even one, I, I'm having a really hard time finding the, picture of it but um I found it for like a second and then it I don't know what happened to it but it's supposed to be like 30,000 years old Ooh. so there are people who have been drawing these and carving these into things forever 
you know that's always crazy how it's like you know people from different countries or different you know nationalities and stuff that like we're all doing the one common thing yeah yeah Yeah. and I think that that's sort of symbolic of how our consciousness I think was more connected a long time ago and now just the way we're evolving the point is to individuate more but now I feel like it's coming around to this point where we're individuating and we're reconnecting with the the more connected consciousness, like whatever you want to call it, unity consciousness, Christ consciousness, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it has a lot of names. Yeah. <laughs> no, I like that, like, you know, everybody is coming, not coming back to a common factor, but like we can relate to, even now, like in the future that we're in, we can still relate by common ground, like stuff like labyrinths and stuff like that, or even just like any kind of art, you know, Cause I've always like, I used to do a lot of like geometric stuff, like with painting and stuff like that. And it was always like, I felt really meditative to me. So mm-hmm. it's, when you mentioned like drawing labyrinths could be meditative. I was like, yeah, I mean, I've always felt art to be kind of like, you know, soothing, chill out, you know, put on some nice music, drink your hot tea, zone out. Yes. I okay. like want to make a point to do that more. I've been doing it a little bit lately, but yeah, about to be the season for it. Going into like winter will be. Yeah good time you well, know yeah totally did you have any questions at all about the presentation I kind of forgot to ask you before I started drawing labyrinths <laughs> um uh I guess like um I guess like I found it interesting it's not really a question more of an observation when you talk yeah. about like you know it imitating like the brain or like the cerebral cortex and how that can like lead us back to the like divine consciousness do you think like you know doing more of it in like a meditation practice can like help us bring it does that make sense like bring it come together or bring it together if we focus more on like I don't know doing the walk and stuff yeah I mean I think it going into any deep meditative state will get you there you know I don't necessarily think you need to walk or trace a labyrinth I think it's just cool to see like a visual representation of kind of what's happening in that process you know Mm -hmm. although I will say like when he talks about activating the pineal gland I guess he is specifically in Joe Dispenza's meditations he is doing sort of like a kundalini activation where you like squeeze the uh what do you call that the squeeze the the like muscles down below uh, pelvic uh your not pelvic uh the, one, the one's down there. I know. What you're I know about. it's in the it's in the presentation here. Let me see. Like is that? I, I don't think I wrote that down. I didn't really go over how to do that, but it's right here. Okay. He says, when we inhale through our nose and at the same time squeeze our intrinsic muscles, we accelerate the cerebrospinal fluid into the brain. As we follow the movement of energy to the top of our head and hold our breath and squeeze, we are increasing intrathecal pressure. The increased pressure moves the cerebrospinal fluid from the fourth ventricle through a small canal into the third ventricle. And at the same time, fluid traveling around the cerebellum compresses the crystals of the pineal gland. The mechanical stress that is applied produces an electrical charge in the pineal gland, creating a piezoelectric electric effect. So like, it's funny, I was having a conversation with my friend about the pineal gland. um, And she said something like, that's where your soul is. And I was like, well, I don't know. I think your soul is in your heart and your pineal gland is like an antenna. Like, that's kind of how I think of it. Like, it, it's like, yeah, how you connect. Sound of that. yeah, no, I'm in, um, I just thought yeah. about it. I read about the crystals being activated in the pineal gland. It's like a little radio recep- receiver or something. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, he talks radio about the radio wires connecting together to send out your signal. Yeah. So he talks yeah. about squeezing those bottom, like when you're squeezing your groin and your anus, like all of that together when you're breathing and you can even do Kundalini yoga. And there's a lot of practices where you do that and it like squeezes that spinal fluid up. So I feel like, and we can ask Ellen about this next week. Um, when we do a breath work session, if, if that's also what breath work is doing, 
Um, I don't feel like you consciously squeeze those muscles, but I feel like you can get to the same kind of quantum spaces through breath work and through other ways of meditation. So when you're asking about like, how do we get there kind of like, I feel like that's kind of what you were asking. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it's a lot of different ways, but I think that the labyrinth just gives us like a visual representation. And even I actually took a class on labyrinths a couple of years ago when I went on a yoga retreat and they didn't go this in depth at all. They just kind of told us a little bit. Of, it was very surface level. You know, you go in, mm -hmm. you come out, here's how you draw them. And they had a labyrinth there. And so we got to walk it, which was really cool. Um, but what was nuts that I realized is that on my property, my husband and I often take a walk from our house out to the woods and out to this overlook point where we just stop and look at the mountains and then we turn around and we come back. And I was like, oh, that's my own version of a labyrinth. Like it doesn't necessarily have to be like the one we're drawing, you know, it could even be represented in like a place that you walk to and you stop yeah. and, realize and come back, you know? So it's just like a, I guess it's like a walking meditation. Yeah. A mindfulness walker, a mindful yeah. walker, whatever. Yeah, that's what I was going to compare it to. Yeah. So even like, um, that one that's at Glastonbury, the tour on the top of the mountain, you could even think of like walking up a mountain, taking a hike up to the top of a yeah. mountain and stopping and coming down is like another version of a labyrinth, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think so, they all tie together. Though. Totally. Cool. Well, but yeah. That was fun. <laughs> it was. I like drawing. I, I feel like I I feel like I drew a lot more when I was a kid and then as an adulthood it just kind of like faded into the background yeah so I like the to do it you know well that gives you something new to to draw and to play with right and it's like yeah. kind of nice to have something to start with because sometimes you just like don't do it because you don't have anything in mind to draw you know what I mean exactly. yeah for sure yeah Okay, I'll, I'll draw some labyrinth stuff and I'll show them to you. Yes, I can't wait. <laughs> cool. Well, yeah, thank you, Wendy. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, thanks so much for being here. Of and course, yeah. Chatting and talking about labyrinths. <laughs> labyrinths. Yeah, we, we love talking about the love talking about the soul and the consciousness, you know? Yes. <laughs> it really lifts my spirits for sure. Oh, good. I'm glad. Yes. Um, I will uh, see you next time, though. I hope you have a good day. Yeah, you too, Angela. See ya. I will. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.